As a kid, what was your worst shit? My parents are going to kill me moment. When I was 13. I got a new laser pointer. I'd get bored and shine it in people's windows at night for just a second. Just enough to mess with their heads. One night a cop showed up on my porch and threatened to take me to jail. My mother was not amused. Similar-ish story. In 2010 I was in China traveling with the school city travel club. One friend of mine bought a very powerful laser pointer and was shining it out the hotel window for half an hour or so. Then three advisors showed up at our door saying that if we didn't cut that shti out the hotel staff was going to call the cops. I got caught shoplifting when I was 13. Stealing video games. The worst part was that my dad worked for the railroad and was gone so I had to wait over 24 hours for my punishment. My punishment was digging all the holes for fence posts around an acre and a half of land from sunrise to sunset. It took me most of my summer vacation and I lost touch with a lot of friends because of it. When I was around 6 years old. The doctors had to have a pin put into one of my fingers to straighten it out. During school at lunch I pulled it out because I could. I soon realized I was fk and they had to put another back in. When I was awake. When I was 5 years old. I jumped off a second floor balcony with an unfurled umbrella. Hoping to fly like my hero Mary Poppins. But, of course, I didn't experience flight. I broke my ankle on impact and ended the afternoon as a fat child weeping on the ground. IDK if this counts for kid but when I was 15 I took my dad's car at 3am to pick up this chick. When I got to her house I saw that my car had a flat tire. I called them told them what I did and where I was because I didn't really know how to drive and didn't want to drive on a flat. They were pissed. In 4th grade I drew some sexual scenes thinking I was the coolest kid in the world. I got caught by the teacher so I ran toward the trash and threw the paper. The teacher ignored it so I thought it was over. Later that day I am in the teacher office. My dad was there. The drawing on the table. My life flashes before me. I tripped my little sister and she broke her arm. Amazing. She told everyone that she tripped over a stick. And she kept up the life for 15 years until we were both out of college. I think you owe her a life debt. Got in a fight at school. I was usually a pretty good student so when I got my first, and only, after school detention cleaning the gyms I thought my parents were going to freak. Turns out they loved it and bought me pizza haha. When I was 14 I rebelled against my parents making me go to an activity involving my sisters that had nothing to do with me. Lasted sometimes between 18 to 20 hours. I had absolutely no interest in. And took place every single weekend in the summer. Nothing against my sisters but it was pure torture for me. Of course. My mother's answer for everything was a beating. This would have been a very rare thing to occur in front of my dad. As she came towards me with that belt that I had hated for as long as I remember. I realized for the first time that I was looking down at her. I was bigger than her now. I decided right there that she was never going to beat on me again. I told her that and I open handed. Knocked her off her feet. Her eyes were bigger saucers when she hit the floor. Then I thought I was going to die. My dad gave me a spanking. The only one I ever remember getting from him. I guess he felt that he had to do something. It was so mild compared to what my mother dealt out that it was almost a joke. But I didn't tell dad that. I survived and my mother never hit me again. Although she continued to intimidate me in other ways until I left home a couple of years later. I threw a Friday night party in grade 10 while my parents were away for the weekend. I was a pretty obedient kid up to that point so my parents trusted me. Turned out to be a pretty awesome party with a bunch of good people. As expected people became quite intoxicated and things got out of hand. One guy fell down the stairs and went head first through the drywall and passed out. This left a basketball sized hole in the drywall and I started freaking out. My friends and I spent all day Saturday replacing the drywall and painting over the hole. I told my parents 5 years later over Christmas dinner and everyone was in tears. So all in all it ended as a pretty good story. Mum asked me to defrost the freezer. Which also involved scraping the ice off the inside. 
For some reason I thought a screwdriver was the most appropriate tool and ended up poking a hole in it. She wasn't very pleased. The new one cost you a cute 350. I crashed their cars. Both of them. A little bit. When I was about 12. I was moving my dad's truck so it wouldn't block my basketball hoop. I knew how to drive just fine. So my parents were okay with me doing that. I made a critical error though. While backing the truck into a spot behind my mom's SUV. I didn't realize the tailgate was down. As I'm backing. I hear a huge crunch and the truck stops. I'm f -kid. Got out to assess the damage. And the truck is fine. The SUV, 1998 Land Cruiser, had a very uniform crease along the lift gate. I said nothing. It was so perfect that nobody ever noticed. Even when we traded the car in 5 years later. On Thanksgiving Eve. When I was about 12. My mom. Grandmother and I were finishing up the dishes. We were unloading the dishwasher and drying putting away dishes. My mom and grandmother were sitting and I was standing opposite them. I grabbed a cover of a crystal sugar dish. It looked like it had about a drop of water in it. So to be a wissies. I pretended I was going to throw it in my mother's face. She gave me a look like don't you dare. So I threw the drop of water in her face. Only it wasn't a drop. The entire dish was full of water. I soaked her face. Water dripping off her glasses and down her face to her shirt. If looks could kill. I would have been dead on the spot. I was terrified. I figured I was grounded for life. But I got a respite. My grandmother started hysterically laughing. Not just giggling. Guffawing to the point of tears. She saved my hide. I love my grandmother. Not my story. But my father's. He and his brothers decided if they could push over a big ass boulder. Amazingly. With their scrawny kid arms. They did. Only problem was that it was on the top of a hill. To their surprise. They got their first lesson on physics. The boulder kept rolling. Gaining momentum as it tumbled down the hill. To my dad's relief. He saw a big fence at the bottom. And thought the boulder would just crash into the fence and stop its rocky journey into the innocent neighborhood below. To the kid's horror. The boulder hit a bump and it flew over the fence. My dad said his heart has never fell lower than that moment. The boulder crashed over on the other side. Bounced haphazardly until it careened into someone's kitchen. It blew down the entire wall. And settled into the middle of the house. The boys just stared at the now demolished home. Looked at each other. Then walked home. They never mentioned it to anyone until after my grandfather died. It is now a favorite holiday story. To my grandmother's horror. Sister and I were doing the dishes and started flicking water at each other. Ended in a full blown. House wide water fight. At some point we stopped and realized what we just did. My boyfriend's story is worse. Better. He has 8 siblings and they started a house wide tomato fight. They got in a lot more trouble. When I was in middle school we had one of those projects where you had to build a mini bridge. You started out with just the basic sticks and used push pins, the ones with the little colored balls on the end. Then glued them together. I took mine home in a shoe box and immediately laid it on the floor because I was so over it. Later in the week my little sister was running through the house and ran into my room. All we heard were horrible screams coming from my room. We went in and she was on the floor with like 50 of those pins in her foot. Balls deep. I suppose you would say. She had stepped on the box so hard that many of them had actually bent inside of her foot. My dad took them all out and I can't remember any other time that I was in so much trouble. Except for the other time that she had to wear a heart monitor and I made her unlapse around the yard to throw off the machine. I was a mean fuck. I know. Me and my brothers were wrestling in the living room when my parents weren't home and one of us was pushed into our big screen TV and it knocked the screen in, old school projection TV. We knew we're gonna be in big trouble and literally put on every pair of pants we owned in preparation. When I was 10 I was pretty small and couldn't get to the bathroom mirror which was above the sink. So I had the great idea to stand on the toilet and lean forward so I could see myself in the mirror. 
When I stood on the toilet and leaned forward the toilet seat brackets broke and I fell down on the floor along with the toilet seat. I didn't know how to explain it so I just put the seat back on the toilet and left like nothing had happened. They soon found out. They were quite angry. When I was in 5th grade I was playing with matches in the bathroom with a friend. We lit the toilet paper on fire and it caught the paint on the wall on fire. By the time we got it out a nice portion of the wall was burned. I remember looking at it before we ran out and thinking fuck. Ended up getting busted. It was bad. I think the worst part of the punishment was my dad dragging me to different hospitals to see patients at all the burn units. He made me stay longer if there were burnt kids. I remember hating him for it but as I look back and realize I have a healthy respect and awareness of all things that burn. I realize it was quality parenting. Edit. In case it isn't clear. We were in the bathroom at school. When I was about 14 I told my dad to FCK off. It was pretty much the first time I'd even sworn in front of my parents. The rage that came over my dad's face caused me to instantly run away. I ran into the garden. Big mistake. With nowhere to go I decided to run down the small alley down the side of my house. Scooted past the bins thinking I was a smart ass as my dad wouldn't be able to get past. That feeling was short lived as I heard dad pushing the bins towards me quickly pinning me to the gate in front of me. It was then like a scene out if the walking dead as he was reaching over the bins to grab me. Let's just say I didn't do it again. TLDR told my dad to FCK off. Ended up being pinned between the bin and a gate with my psycho dad trying to kill me. Edit. Typo. Still am a kid. But in first grade I broke a spoon. I don't know why I was scared. We had a shit ton of spoons. My little 6 year old brain couldn't imagine what would happen because I broke that fking spoon. I thought I would have to run away or something. Turns out my parents didn't give a fuck. The thought process of you imagining that you would be getting in trouble would be hilarious. A. My parents were pretty tough on me. I never partied. Drank. Went out with friends. Nothing. Grades were everything to my parents and so was my getting into college. When I was a sophomore in high school I thought I was going to get a C overall in biology and I was freaking out about it for two weeks. I was going to bed crying every night because I was afraid of my parents reaction. I finally told my mom that I thought my final grade was going to be a C before she could open my report card that we got in the mail. She said something like well. I guess you can forget about college then. Turns out I got a B. As a teen I was surprised I got off so easy, no yelling or anything before the report card was opened. As an adult I am still pissed off by what she said. Edit. I keep getting asked so no. I am not Asian. When I was about 10 I was playing with a friend who lived down the street. His younger brother and my younger sister both wanted to play hide and seek. We begrudgingly agreed and said we would be it first. We found this bucket of liquid and for some reason thought it was glue. It was at this point we decided to spread it all around the safe zone thinking if we couldn't catch them it would stop them so we could tag them. It wasn't glue. It was some kind of solvent. My sister ran through it. Slipped. And landed directly on her head. Blood and tears everywhere. Thought she was dead. Was convinced I was either going to jail or my parents would kill me. Turned out to be fine. Didn't even need stitches. Only grounded for like 2 weeks. I lit a Mormon church dumpster on fire when I was 8 using a dried up palm tree branch. I ran away. But then came back to see if things got worse. The fire department and police were there along with a crowd. And a family that saw me do it and run away pointed me out to the cops. Never go back. Always a mistake. Arsons always come back to see the aftermath. Otherwise. What's the point? When I was in grade 8 this girl kept sending me love notes as a joke because her boyfriend thought it'd be funny for some stupid reason. Usually I just crumpled them up and threw them away. But one day I snapped and sent one back saying go suck on, bf's name, s balls. She saw it. Laughed. And threw it on the ground. Of course the most hard ass teacher finds that note and starts investigating about who wrote it. 
She found out it was me just as school was over. So she told me to come see her the next morning. That was the worst 16 hours of my life. I just knew that she was going to yell until I started bleeding from my ears. Then call my parents who would kill me right there and there. I went to school the next day. And turns out she forgot. And the girl stopped sending me notes too. So everything went better than expected. I was cooking in our microwave. In my defense it was an old microwave. And it suddenly started making weird crackling noises. I looked in and the interior roof has a small fire right in the middle. So I did the only thing an 8 year old would do I yelled fire and sprinted out of the house and left my mum who had to run out of the shower to put it out. I still do this when people ask me to make commitments. Yelling fire and running works in a surprising number of situations. I made a slingshot out of a piece of wood and some elastic. Thought I should test it out by shooting the back window of my parents van. Slingshot worked. We were absolutely certain that there was no way to break a window on a car in the used car lot across the street with a stupid little spring loaded BB gun. We were wrong. It was spectacular. We ended up being wrong about 5 more times. I came home stoned as fck and when I entered the kitchen I saw a bag of cookies one of my parents did for some friends being really hungry I thought nobody would notice if I eat some of them I accidentally destroyed the bag and half of the cookies landed on the ground. This happened 2 hours ago. I don't even have cookies in my house but I'm stoned and I'm afraid that this is gonna happen to me. When I was about 7 or 8 my mom worked at a dollar store run by my grandpa. It was in the next town over from where we lived and so my mom would bring me to work with her. To pass the time I would play with random toys from the store. These toys included the lighter I managed to snag. I'd spend my days burning cardboard boxes out back and putting them out. You can imagine my terror when the store itself was lit up by a box I hadn't fully extinguished. TLDR. My career as a pyro ended in the 90s when I burned down a dollar store. We were young. And took my GF's father's car for a spin into town. Avoided cops and had a great night. Rushed it back to the garage in time for the prefect crime. He walks in. And we are all smug in the knowledge we had got away with something major. Until he asks why his car is wet when it's been garaged all night. I really thought we were in for it. But he laughed it off. Before pulling me aside and advising me if we ever did it again. He would have my balls as a hood ornament. Not me. But when my brother was 17 he backed his truck up into my dad's 1951 Pontiac. Now my dad bought this car when he was a teenager and spent years fixing it up. And was always really careful with it. My brother was so scared to tell him that he didn't come home for a week. How badly damaged was the Pontiac? It wasn't too bad really. He wasn't driving fast. I think he bent the driver's side front fender in pretty good. My memory of it is hazy as it was about 13 years ago. I was actually in high school when this happened. My mom had this really old coffee maker in which the on off switch slid from left to right. Well. She never actually turned it off. She would just unplug it when she was done using it in the morning. So one day I decided I was going to switch it to the off position. It had been stuck in the on position for so long that it was actually stuck and popped off and fell inside the plastic casing of the machine. Lost in oblivion. I knew she would be pissed that I broke something. But I hoped it would still work. Never saying anything to her. Turns out it didn't turn on when she used it the next morning and she was incredibly livid. Carrying on that she didn't have her morning coffee and had to go out and buy a new coffee maker. At 15 I didn't understand why this was so terrible. But now as a coffee drinking adult. I get it. In the 8th grade. I met a transfer student who taught me about skipping class. We went into this wooded area behind the school. No forest porn. And got the cops called on us. Transfer student had a lighter on him and the cops were yelling. Where's the weed? Scared shitless. I tried running. But my lack of physical activity as a kid allowed me to make it about 30 feet before the cop caught me. Tried to hide it from mom. But two days later. I got in the car and she dropped paperwork in my lap describing the incident in full detail. She didn't talk to me for a week. 
an entire week. Pondering on how my mother would end me. My brother and I tried to get mom back for putting baby powder in our shoes before school. Shoes smoked like walking on dry dirt all day. Home before mom. She worked late. We devised a revenge plan. We took all the baby powder. Four bottles. And emptied them on top of the ceiling fan blades in her bedroom. We waited all night for her to go to bed and turned the switch on. The switch turned on the fan and light. She finally went to bed and nothing. No laugh. No noise and just a white cloud under the door. A white ghost confronted us looking like mom yet much angrier explaining too far this time. We moved out of that house 8 years later and still found powder in that room. I was around the age of 4 or 5. My uncle took me to the mall for my birthday to buy me a gift from the kids store. I shti myself. Uncle Randy. I pooped myself. So he takes me to the bathroom to clean up. Poor guy. So he decides it's in our best interest to just toss my soiled underwear. But before he did that I proclaimed my mom will kill you if you throw my undies away. I was scared to death. He just bought me a new pair. I once borrowed my mom's car back when I was in high school to visit my girlfriend on New Year's. Quick background. I was in Reno and she was in LA. So. Borrowed car in hand. I drove the 500 miles down to see her. We had a nice time. But I was in a rush for some reason to get back. About 100 miles into the trek back home at 3am I get sleepy. I woke up going 80 miles per hour in the median. Swerved to dodge a cactus. Looked and saw the sheer drop on the other side of the highway. Noped back towards the median. Then tried to steer yet again towards the road. When the car started tipping. Next thing I know. The night has given way to day and I crawl out of the crumpled up upside down window and stumble across the highway. Some bro calls me an ambulance. And I'm whisked hundreds of miles away to the nearest hospital. Somewhere between there and lounging in the hospital bed I realize that the ice cream I had was spilled all over the car. I'm so dead. My mom was terrified of rats. After years and years of begging she finally gave in and let me get one. I got two. She obviously was regretting the decision by the time I got home and terrified to live in her own home. A week later found out one was pregnant and ended up with 15 rats. That was not a good decision to have. Ended up keeping two of the babies. The two original adults and finding homes for the rest. Went better than expected. When I was about 8 years old I hit my little brother, age 6, over the top of his head with a toy rake and made about 3 puncture holes. Did you guys know your scalp bleeds like a mofo when it is cut? He had blood streaming all down his face and was screaming. Oh. Crap. They are going to kill me. I better lock myself in the bathroom for safety. P.S. He deserved it. Snuck out of my house at 15 to go hang out with my boyfriend. I guess the dog heard me and woke my parents up. We had just gotten to my boyfriend's house when my dad called me. I was too scared to answer. So I just had my BF drive me back to my house. On the way. We accidentally ran over a cat. Which was so incredibly horrifying. I cried. And then when I got home my dad had locked up the entire house so I had to ring the doorbell at 3am to get in. I was grounded for weeks and weeks. Got arrested with a friend for smoking a blunt in my car around the corner from his house. Cop knocked on the window. Rolled the window down and smoke practically billowed out of the car. In the back seat of the car on the way to the slammer. I mumbled that my curfew is in 10 minutes. The cop laughed. In 7th grade my language arts class went to the computer lab for a project about our favorite animal. My 7th grade self had a refked sense of humor. I was doing my report on elephants. And I had an ingenious idea to look up elephant boner right as my teacher was walking behind me. The images that popped up drew the immediate attention of my entire class. My teacher gave me the worst what the fuck expression. And I thought she would call my parents. Fortunately. My family never found out about it. I'd say when I got a speeding ticket and then crashed into someone's car cause I got lost on the way to that stupid speed awareness thing they try and get you to do in the UK instead of getting points. But I was 19 so that doesn't count. 
I think I've always been the same level of scared of my parents. So I'll go for the first one. I hit a kid in school cause she told me, and I quote, I don't like you cause you're white. I was 4. I can't remember exactly what happened. But I thought my parents were gonna be mad at me. They weren't. Biggest relief of my young life haha. <laughs>